thank you for aiding me, but I sense you came for a different purpose. Let's talk inside the castle. Surely there must be another way. No, my lady, of course not. I'll do as you ask. Come here, Outlander. We must talk. It feels strange to talk to an Outlander in such a sacred place. But the Queen of the Night Sky insists. I need to render judgment on an important claim, and she says you can help me reach the correct decision. Words of truth from the mouth of an outlander. Remarkable. The Red Exiles and a few others believe that Chodala is the Nerevarian. He's convinced them, but not me. I came here to consider my options. I fear a bloodbath if I oppose his claim. Perhaps, but I must remain impartial. If someone else reveals the flaws in Chodala's claims by comparing him to the failed incarnates, that might do the trick. We thought the incarnates were possessed by the spirit of Nerevar, but each had a critical flaw that made them destined to fail to fulfill the prophecy. Their spirits reside here. Yes, you should speak to the incarnates. I see Azura's wisdom now. Take this pouch of blessed grave dust. Sprinkle a pinch upon the bones of the incarnates to call forth their spirits. Return to Aldrin after you have learned all you can. Perhaps we can curb Chodala's ambitions before they lead us to war. We need knowledge to defeat Chodala Outlander. Listen well to what the failed incarnates have to say. Once I was the hope of my people, but then my claim was proven false. Now I wait, and I hope for the Nerevarian's return. State your question, Outlander, and I shall do as Azura urges. To fulfill the prophecy, I followed a path of blood and war. In the end, my path became a road that led nowhere, and I was cast down from my lofty spot. Take my scroll, and help the wise woman understand the futility of a senseless war. Nerevarin remains a promise unfulfilled, and I am as guilty of prideful posturing as every other failed incarnate that occupies this hall. Ask your question and let's be done with this outlander. The Nerevarin must listen as well as proclaim. I refuse to accept wise counsel, which led to the doom of my tribe and the end of my quest to embody the spirit of Nerevar. Take my scroll and remind the wise woman that wisdom ignored is ignorance. We are the failed incarnates, the Ashland who proudly proclaimed themselves to be the Nerevarian, but were found wanting. The Lady of Dawn and Dusk urged us to cooperate. 
So ask your question, Outlander. Take my scroll and help the wise woman see the lie of unbridled power. I thought myself the reborn Nerabar, for I was the strongest, most powerful warrior in all the land. But power alone won't save my people. In the end, it couldn't even save me. Mortal, let us speak. I foresaw your usefulness before you even set foot in Vardenfell. Now comes a test that will challenge your ability to separate truth from lies. You must convince the tribes that Chodala is not the Nerevarian. Dovrissi's wisdom outshines most other mortals. She recognizes the futility of Chodala's claim. If she rebuffs him, however, the tribes will turn on each other, and blood will flow. The staff, Sunra, it makes Chodala confident, reckless. Your instincts serve you well. Chodala's path took a dark turn. However, my sight clouds when I look too closely. So Thessil built Sunra, but he did not create it with this vile purpose in mind. You must act on my behalf and Vivex. Then go, return to Aldrun and help the wise woman reveal the falsehood of Chodala's claim. And let Saren assist you. She is my champion and a trusted friend of all Ashlanders. Use what the Incarnate shared with you. Their failures point the way toward Chodala's downfall. But beware Chodala's power. He may not be the Nerevarine, but some greater agency has lent strength to his conviction. Due to an ancient pact, I am not permitted to interfere in the affairs of Nern. Even this casual discussion pushes the boundaries of that agreement. Instead, I must work through trusted agents, such as yourself and Saren. Helping that arrogant imposter? Whatever gave you the idea that I was helping that murderer? Vardenfell must stand. Everything I do in this regard serves that single goal. Best that you remember that, mortal.
One more day, that is all I ask. Lane and Menwendel must... You mean to spend some time in Voss? I wouldn't linger if I were you. You don't have scales or fur, so you should be safe for a time. But if Savarek and his lackeys smell a whiff of danger on you, they'll put in the new wizard magistrate. When Mistress Dratha fell ill, House Telvani put Savarak in charge of Vas. It was all honey and orchids for a time, but not anymore. The people are desperate for Dratha to return. I'm beginning to lose hope. Openly, no. Some work against him in secret, but he sicks his black snail mercenaries on anyone who opposes him publicly. Don't believe me? Ask him yourself. He covets Telmora Tower, but until Dratha dies, he holds court in the Gathering House. Keep your wits around Savarak. He's slippery as a slaughterfish, and twice as deadly. He's a member of House Telvani, like Mistress Dratha. Mistress Dratha is powerful, but reclusive. Savarak's a little more ambitious. Technically, yes. Luckily, Mistress Dratha's mouth, Lane Sadri, has been working against him in secret. We're lucky to have her. Savarik can sniff out a conspiracy like a Nixox sniffs out truffles. Without Lane, we'd probably be dead already. She's one of the oldest, most powerful Telvani counselors and a ruler of nearby Telmora, the great fungal tower just across the river. She ruled Voss and lands beyond until she fell ill. Some people think it's just old age. I'm not so sure. A thousand times yes. Our mistress has a mixed reputation. Outsiders often say she is cold and calculating. That may be, but...
the moon and star. You've returned. The wise woman returned from the cavern of the incarnate and went right into Scar to meet with the tribes. Chodal is in there too, about to be named the Nereverine. Tell me you came back with something to stop my brother's rise to power. Ah, uh, of course. Use the tales of the failed incarnates to counter Chodala's arguments. That's brilliant. Well, except for one problem. An outlander has no status in the council. The Ashlanders won't listen to a word you say. Someone else has to present the arguments. Someone they trust. I suppose that means I have to challenge my brother. With your help, of course. Meet me inside. Must we continue this farce? It's obvious that I'm the Nera Baron. Someone has stepped forward to challenge your claim, Chodala. Seren, I'm disappointed in you, dear sister. Enough. I shall hear your arguments and render my decision. Even the Outlander can see that I'm the most powerful Ash Khan. My strength alone proves that I am the Nera Varine. Chodala puts forth his great strength as proof of his claim. Give me the scroll that discounts such a trait for the Nera Varine. Chodala puts forth his great strength as proof of his claim. Give me the scroll that discounts such a trait for the Nerevarine. Yes, that's a sound argument. Incarnate, appear! As a warrior and as an Ashkar, I was the most powerful of my age. But for all my strength, I failed my people. Don't follow my example. The Faithless Houses dare to threaten our land, but we shall meet them in battle, and I will lead us to victory! This is more nerve-wracking than I anticipated. Which scroll do you recommend to counter this argument? That makes sense. I'll try that. Incarnate, appear! I thought the path to the Nerevarian was a path of blood and battle, but my love of war was my undoing. War is not the way. These failed incarnates prove nothing! I need no counsel but my own, as befits my status as the Nerevarian! I think it's working. One more strong assertion, and that should do it. Of course. Let's see what happens. Incarnate, appear! I refuse to accept the counsel of the wise women and the Ashkans. 
I thought I knew best, but I knew nothing. That is not the way of the Nerebari. Saren and the Outlander, their arguments have merit. Chodala, we deny your claim. You are not the Nerevarian. This proves nothing! Look how the staff protects me! I am the Nerevarian! Red exiles slay the other leaders! No! We're good at this. Go to my hut and get my healer's sack. Now. Right away, wise woman. I hate what my brother's become. been revealed as a failed Nerevarian, but that hasn't dissuaded him from his reckless course of action. As long as he wields the staff, he shall be unstoppable. Time is against you, mortal. Even now, Vivek, that pompous usurper, grows increasingly weaker. As much as I deplore him, Vivek cannot fall to Chodala's vile magic. There's another power, I think. One I can't quite put my finger on. Return to Vivek City. Do what you can to aid Vivek. And pay heed to my faithful vessel, Saren. I name her Champion of the Moon and Star. She will play a pivotal role in ending her brother's march toward godhood, if she survives. That was... exhilarating. That was... glorious. Lady Azura's presence filled me with such... wonder. She actually spoke through me. I heard everything she said, and I felt her sense of urgency. You need to return to Vivek City immediately. And help you I shall. Return to Vivek City, while I track down my brother and his damnable staff. With the Ashlanders against him, he won't have many options. After I locate him, I'll meet you, and we can find a way to break through Chodala's defenses.
that keep me safe? And my coins in my purse. I don't like the looks of that sky. As a god weakens, so too does his city suffer. I know my people grow fearful. Even the Arch Cannon is distressed. But the energy that remains to me holds the moonlit in the sky. At least for now. So what news does my eyes and ears bring to me? How this upstart Ashlander learned to attune Sotha Seal's tool confounds my understanding. And he dares use my power? Still, your help is appreciated. Every strike and parry takes us one step closer to ending this threat and restoring my vitality. Due to Lord Vivek's condition, it falls upon us to find a solution. must conserve his remaining energy, so we need to solve this problem on our own. It all comes back to Chodala. That damned Ashland is draining the warrior poet's power. We need to stop him and get that damned staff. How should I know? That's not a skill the Tribunal teaches. Return to Barrelzar's tower and get Sothisil's former apprentice to come up with some kind of countermeasure. I'm sure he knows more than he's told you. I do have one concern, though. You see right through me, Outlander. I have more worries than a Kwama Queen has eggs. I'm talking about Chodala's sister. Saren claims to want to help, to want peace. But I don't trust her. Seek out Barrelzar, but be wary of the Ashlander's sister. We need to stop Chodala, and to do that, we need to find a way to overcome the device he's wielding. Find Barrozar and make sure that crazy mage provides you with something we can use to save Lord Vivek. Is the bull sure it can bed the Betty? No. But by all accounts, we'll be better off with Sunara in our hands and away from Chodala. That won't be possible, however as long as the Ashlander remains impervious to every attack. The female Ashlander? Well, if that wasn't enough of a reason, remember that she's also Chodala's sister. Blood sings to blood, as the warrior poet so elegantly put it. Be wary of that one, Outlander. She'll stab you in the back, mark my words. Vivek loves this land, and the land loves him in return. He's always had a special bond with Vardenfell. Is it so hard to believe that Red Mountain reflects his suffering? Beyond that, there's also Bardao, the moonlit that floats above us. Lord Vivek's intervention stopped the moonlit from crashing into the city. He holds it above us by strength of will, but as he weakens, so too does the power that keeps the rock afloat. If the Vex energy wanes further, it would spell disaster.
Here we go. Is someone up there? I could use some help down here. Hurry, please. I have a natural aversion to Daedra. Side by side. to concentrate and maintain schedules when interruptions constantly occur. Don't they know the great gear never pauses in its rotations? So that was you up there. I appreciate the assistance. Daedric entities can be very unpredictable. Logic has very little place in the behavior of Daedra, my hopeful associate. Studying the fabric of reality does tend to attract unwanted attention. But these creatures appeared just before you entered my tower. I wonder, why have you returned? Ah, a modification of my master's old experiments. Turning a simple tool into a dangerous weapon. Ingenious! Evil, yes, but also quite brilliant. Hmm. A tonal inverter should counter it. Uses sound waves to temporarily disrupt the flow of energy. No, of course not. I just invented it. I need proper components to build such a device. My hirelings scour the land for materials all the time. Here's a list. Head out the back door and ask them to direct you to these common dwarven components. Hirelings? Yes, they worked for me, before they quit, ungrateful netches. Still, I paid them well before the pistons slipped their alignments. They should know where to find the components. Last I heard, Snorfin and the others were in Molagmar. The 
situation has wound dangerously tight, but I believe the gears revolve around you. Once you leave, I should be perfectly safe. Or at least as safe as I ever am in the midst of all these experiments. You, however, stay vigilant, my friend. I could, but I won't pour five-year-old Flynn into a cracked decanter. No offense. Suffice it to say, they're fairly common as far as Dwemer components go. Use the list and talk to my former hirelings. I'll build the device the moment you return. I feel like such a puny snowback, hiding here in Molagmar. But you don't want to hear about my troubles. What can this broken Nord do for you? Berylzar. He's the reason I'm a shattered man, doomed to become a cowering sheep like the rest of these pilgrims. Uh, all right, let me see that. Hmm. Arkenthung Sturdoms. You can find a Sonnen's generator there, after you deal with the steam trap. The cursed contraption. I almost had it figured out when a ghost floated up to me. No problem, I think. But then it enters a centurion. Ghost machines. No sane Nord can fight ghost machines. I dropped my notes and ran as fast as I could. Not just ghosts. Ghosts that possess dwarven machines. I'm through working for that crazy old mage and his clockwork monstrosities. But if you want to get past the steam trap, Find my notes and follow the directions. If you're another pilgrim looking for charity, I suggest you move along. I have neither the time to waste nor the gold to spare. I'm currently between employment, and my own funds have become dangerously depleted. Let me see that. What's that crazy mage need this time? Hmm. I suppose you could find a manual clockwork shaft in the Nichu left ruins. But I'd avoid that place if I were you. If the roof doesn't collapse, the constructs will rip you apart. If you insist... Deep in the ruins churns a big machine. When I was there, it sputtered and vibrated, collapsing parts of the ceiling. Lava and rock fell everywhere. You need to get past that and some nasty constructs to retrieve the item. That mage is a menace. Oh, he always paid well, but the places he asked me to go, each was more dangerous than the last. And if I had to hear about the great gear one more time, for my own health and sanity, I had to break ties with Berylzar. Vampires. 
I'll find a way to make them pay for what they did to my brother. I swear it on the tribunal and any Daedra willing enough to listen. What do you want? Can't you leave a person to her anger and her grief? He did, did he? Let me see that list. Hmm. Well, the crazy old mage always said there were no coincidences. The inversion conduit. I saw one in Gloom Deus, right before I barely escaped from those damned vampires. Eager to become cattle for the bloodsuckers? The Burn Clan killed my brother. Damn their eyes! The item you seek was in the manufactory, but you'll need a control rod to get a dwarven spider to unlock it for you. Because the mage wanted to send me to the far side of Valdenfell, and I need to remain here. I'm not going anywhere until I make the Burn Clan pay for what it did to my brother. If you can kill some of the bastards, that'll be a start. For the 80th time, help is on the way. I've received assurances from House Rhetorin. They will handle this trouble in the mine. You need only be patient. Patient? The foreman just dragged another egg hand out of the mine, and he's worse than the rest. This is on your head, Mobena. I presume you've come here seeking work? I'm afraid the mine may be closed for some time yet. Not too long, of course. Anyway, feel free to stay as long as your coin purse allows. Our innkeeper will no doubt appreciate the business. 
Some of our egg hands have fallen ill. We've elected to keep them in the mines until we find the source of the sickness. Just a precaution, mind you. Surveyors from House Redoran should be arriving any minute to, you know, survey. Trapped? No, don't be absurd. It's not as if they're itching to leave. Look, House Redoran will sort this out. Speak to Foreman Lothdar if you have other questions. He's just over there, by the mine entrance. I have other matters to attend to. Did you hear it? The song. It's all wrong. We have to... We have to... Well, it's about damn time. You daffy House Redoran types have... Wait. You're not House Redoran. Ah! Should've known better. You'd best move on, stranger. This mine's cursed. It'll snatch you up just like poor Thugbruth if you aren't careful. And sorry for growling and moping. We've just been waiting for these damned Redoran surveyors so long kind of lost hope, you know? My egg hands are in buckets of trouble. Some strange noise is turning their brains to pudding, driving the Kwama mad too. It's put a hex on them. They won't budge. They just pace and hum and blubber like idiots. Practically had to beat Thugbruth senseless to drag them out here. Ugh, something in that noise, that song. It's got them by the beards and won't let go. Maris, mercy. Thank you, friend. I'm supposed to wait until the Redoran surveyors show up, but to summon God with that. I want my people home safe. Do what you need to do, but don't stay in there long. I don't want that song to claim you too. Well, it's barely a song. It's just a mash of notes, you know? It crawls up behind your eyeballs and makes you dizzy, paranoid. I've been working in these mines for years, and I've never heard the like. Might have something to do with all the quakes. Yeah, I, I don't know if you noticed, but Red Mountain's been pretty ornery lately. We've been dealing with minor cave-ins for weeks. Could be that one of those tremors uncovered something it shouldn't have.
Ah, just find your help and get to work before I change my mind. If only all spirits could be dealt with by simply slashing away at them. I'm going to take a moment to make an assumption. You're somewhat versed in fighting, or at the very least defending yourself. It's your aura and the swagger that give it away. Are you looking for work by chance? My outfit specializes in spirit intervention, investigating hauntings and putting lingering spirits to rest. Spirits aren't always welcoming, though. In cases like our current job, we need someone to watch our backs. We're to cleanse a malicious presence on lands recently acquired by our employer. I know very little about the area, other than the Ashlanders think it's cursed. Whatever the presence is, it likely won't sit idle while we exercise it. Hence, you. Our destination is an old fortress far to the north. Accessible only by a small pass in the mountains. There's an Ashlander camp outside of it where we'll be stopping for supplies. We may find out more from them. The friendly gentleman talking to us earlier, Lord Thonlin, that's our employer. He just purchased a writ for the land the fortress sits on. Says he got it rather cheap, too. I imagine the spirit infestation must have lowered the price a bit. First, we figure out why they linger. Is it a cursed relic binding them? Vengeance for a wrongful death? Looking to say goodbye to a loved one? It's always different. Once we figure that out, it's easier to get them to move on. I can't say it's always been perfect, but my group's the best at what we do. We even guarantee that our client will be fully satisfied or their money back. Won't find other ghost hunters offering that, I promise. I doubt Lord Thon knows any more than us. Knowing the type of person our employer is, he likely viewed this deal as too good to pass up and left it at that. Not big on details, that one. This team here? This team's the best ghost hunting team in all of Tamriel. We all have a special connection with the realm of the dead in one way or another. It helps us communicate and problem solve when it comes to spirits. near-death experiences. Cast a lightning spell while wading in water? Could put you one step into the great beyond. There's just something about having one foot in the grave that ghosts relate to. Well, then maybe we should talk when we're done. You could round out our group. We're always looking for a little muscle. We thought Shars knew how to fight. I mean, just look at his arms, but... He's a pacifist, so... Uh, oh well. Bellara Nama I, Traveller. May the spirits walk among you as an ally, and your shadow never stray from your feet. It is the language of my people's religion and beliefs. It dates back to ancient times when the true gods were worshipped, when mortals and immortals lived side by side as equals. It's very old. I can tell you more about it, for a donation, of course. You have a valid point. I suppose I have to stay competitive or risk letting this old, grand religion fall into total obscurity. The name of our religion is so ancient that the mortal tongue cannot speak its name, but it holds the secrets of divinity. Its true followers long ago achieved perfection and left this world behind. Most of their teachings are lost to time. I found their lost archives and scrolls. Just a fraction of the truth, Traveler, but enough. The path of perfection is open to me, and you may follow it. For another small donation, I can give you a copy of the holy texts. Ask me when we return. Greetings, fellow Traveler of whatever town we're in. Speak to me as a friend, for that is what we shall become. That is, unless you have darkness in your heart, then we will part as the greatest of enemies. For I only mingle with those pure. Righteous? <laughs> I know. It is the many years I've studied underneath the tutelage of the noblest and most honorable of lords and ladies. 
Like teachers would give their food to the hungry, their money to the poor, their clothes to the naked. They were. So much so they ended up on the streets with no home, no money, and no food. But they had purity in their hearts, and that's what was important. Until they caught the plague, then most of them died. But they died with honor. Nice to get off my feet. 